I'm so happy to be here with you guys, and I'm so happy to be the host of one of my favorite game shows, ladies and gentlemen, and it's Jeopardy! <laughs> Incidentally, this wonderful Jeopardy! game was created on PowerPoint, and if any of you would like a copy for your department to play or like community building or for academics you want to use in your classroom, you're more than welcome to get a copy of what you are about to see today because it has sound effects and it has questions and answers. So with that, without a further ado, give it up for our media center, ladies and gentlemen. Our media center is here. There, awesome. Um, it's not raining today. I mean, I, I am very appreciative of the rain, but it's nice to get a respite from the rain. English people, did I use that word correctly? Respite. Okay. But it's nice. It looks like it's a beautiful, gorgeous day outside, and I'm with beautiful, gorgeous people right here. And I thank you again for uh, being with us. Do you have you have it over here? Okay. Well, we I have it right here. I oh yeah, we might have to use that, Jeffrey. But I think we've got it here. If we don't have the music, that's all right. That's all good. Oh, there's this. Oh yeah. There. I mean, uh, no, that's all good. I don't feel bad that I don't know how to. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> well, I'm telling you right now. Just any part of here. There we go. Okay. You got all you got the music too. My God. Okay. How did you do that? What? That's amazing. Well, uh, Cyrus, can you pick our three contestants for this right now? Yes. I want Scott Silverman. <laughs> Who else are we looking for? Who else are we looking for? I want Elisa, Elisa Meyer. Where? Where is? It? How about Tiffany and Abu? Where is So who, far I'm winning. Who was it? Who was it? Who was your guy? Tell me. Come on up. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. All right, for our three departments, I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell me what department you're from, starting with Scott Silverman. Scott Silverman, interim dean of non credit and external programs. Ah, uh, welcome. <laughs> I am Jeremy Lang, Student Services Specialist in the International Education Center. I am Mercy in the Modern Language Lab. Well, welcome to each one of you right now. Believe it or not, wait, hang on. Hang on. There. Especially by the first question, I'm not going to do very well. Yeah, well, yeah, that, I mean, we saw, okay, there we go. Just open that up. Yeah, open that up. There you go. Technology is wonderful. Don't you know, in the classroom, when you're about to present this lecture, you have prepared so much for this lecture. You slept well the night before, and you have it all set. The kids are going to get so excited, and then you go in and... I planned that. All right, our contestants right now, here we go. These are our categories. Famous alumni. Campus commute, filmed in Santa Monica, campus uh, buildings on campus, 
and name that department. All right. We tossed the coin to see who goes first, and you won the toss. I'm just kidding. We didn't toss a three-sided coin. But, and you won the toss. Go ahead. Pick a category and a dollar amount. Keep in mind that they could win this money. <laughs> Don't worry, Ann. Oh. Name that department for $300. Here it is. This department is located on two campuses. Programs are housed at Center for Media Design. Oh my God, Scott, let me finish the question. Downtown <laughs> <laughs> the main campus. Dr. Silverman. Communications. Uh, you have to answer in the form of a question. What is communication? Let's see, is that right? What is that? Yeah. What is communication? <laughs> okay, what's your next category? Buildings on campus, 100. Buildings on campus for 100. And the answer is, this relatively new building on the main campus is where is a place where students can sit. Oh, my gosh. Jeremy, go for it. What is it? Core Performance Center. It is. Core Performance Center. What is Core Performance Center? Jeremy, next one. What do you want? Buildings on campus for 200. Buildings on campus for 200. SMC's only bachelor degree, Interaction Design, is housed here. Yes, Jer Jeremy, go for it. Well, sticking with that. Okay, this brand new two story building is the latest addition to the Santa Monica campus and a new camp. Scott, what is the Malibu campus? Uh, Scott, you have $600. What is on campus for $400? Buildings on campus for $400. Located in downtown Santa Monica. <laughs> what the hell? What's the answer? Was it me? Was it you? Me? Who the heck else is? It's it you. What is the American standard? With the American standard. The American was not planned. Was not planned. Go for the next one. You got $400. Add to the six. Uh, five hundred. Got... Five hundred for fifteen hundred dollars. This building on the main campus has it. Oh, <laughs> Jeremy, third. Uh, go ahead, Jeremy. Hall. What is Dresher Hall? Well, Hall? That is not correct. Oh, it's not negative two hundred. Yes. What is FSC? That is not correct. Here, this building, main campus has had its third floor locked continuously since March 2020, and it just reopened in February 2023. And do you know? No, unfortunately, that's not correct. And the actual answer is, what is it? What is the HSS building? Someone stop. Who shouted that? Oh, my gosh. Okay, Scott, it's still you. Wait, who had? Who picked that? Yeah, go for it. That's uh, name that department for 500. Name that department for 500. Dennis Biddle is the assistant <laughs> director. Oh, <my> <laughs> I have one speed dial. Scott, what is the answer? What is MO? What is maintenance and operations? You're correct. It was what was he the assistant director of? Right. Okay. 400, name that department. This medium-sized department in humanities has a, an unusually high impact on college governance as four of its members serve as Senate chairs. <laughs> Anyone know? Anyone audience do you know? Attention. Anyone? Senate. Philosophy, sociology, wait, wait, wait. English, what's the answer? Oh. The answer is, is it psychology? What is that? Psychology. Got that right? right there. Julie got that correct. All right, next category. Uh, 200. Two, name that department for 200. Here it is. The first department you see on the left side. Yes. Admissions and record. What is admissions and record? Is that right? Admissions and that's right. Admissions and record. In this building on the left hand side is admissions and records. Who is here from admissions and records right now? Yeah, is admissions and records. Yeah. Okay. Got a couple of time for a couple more. Go ahead. 
Yeah. Yeah. So let's go filmed in Santa Monica for 500. Filmed in Santa Monica for 500. Oh, not that one. That's another one. That's all good. You don't have to worry about it. There you go. 2013, as a lonely writer failing, appalling for his operating system, Joaquin. Okay. Yes. So what is her? What is her? Is that right? That's right. <laughs> Those of you that know, if you've ever seen the movie Her, one, there was a carnival scene, and the carnival was the Santa Monica Pier. And that's for that movie Her. You got one, one you got time for one more. Filmed in Wait, Santa yeah. Monica for 100. Uh, filmed in Santa Monica for 100. 1955, beloved classic, sorry, the iconic James Dean. Yes, Jeremy. Oh, and go ahead. Is it, is that right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Really? All right, folks, that is the end of our Jeopardy round. Take it up for our main contestants. And I told you we were going to give them some cash and prizes. You're getting a hundred grand right now. All right. It is my pleasure to introduce our very own Dr. Maria Munoz, the Dean of Technical Inclusion. Good morning, everyone. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, it brings me as the song, my walk up song. My kids play baseball, so I've never had a walk up song. So that was my walk up song. Uh, Mary J. Blige, you bring me joy. It brings me so much joy to see so many of you that we are actually in our overflow room now. Um, and I just want to take a pause for you to look around and just take in the presence that we have here today. I mean, this is remarkable. It's so good to see all of you here, healthy, safe with us in our community. Um, and so I really purposely chose that song because it brings me so much joy to be part of these events and to help coordinate them for, and hopefully create some joy in your day today. Um, I'd like to also thank you. I'm here up here to thank you for your participation in our equity audit. Uh, many of you participated in our survey focus groups and to, which was to help facilitate us to better understand our current equity efforts here on campus that have been happening for a really long time and to help us identify areas of growth and opportunity to better serve our students and to close our commitment our, to close our racial equity gaps. Um, so today we have uh, Dr. Lauren Ford and Katrina Pentig from HOTEP Consultants to share more about the equity audit and the professional learning opportunities that you all have an opportunity to participate in in the afternoon session. We have one for our classified educators, we have one for our managers and for our faculty. So if we can please give them a warm round of applause uh, to welcome them here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's kind of hard to come on after Jeopardy. I don't have a hundred grand to give or fancy music or anything like that. I am so sorry. Uh, <laughs> but good morning, everybody. My name is Lauren Ford. I'm a strategic consultant with Hotep Consultants. I'm super excited to be here with you all today, along with my colleague, Katrina Pantic-Naval. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of jump into it. 
in the fall semester, our team was brought here to really uh, uncover and unpack and learn a little bit more about the current institutional policies, practices, and just kind of ways of being here at Santa Monica College in order to really understand the climate, the culture, and what amazing work you all are doing to advance your equity efforts and close opportunity gaps. Um, today, we're really entering the last phase of our audit. We spent a lot of time in the fall looking at documents um, and kind of doing a document analysis. We also conducted a survey uh, for both students and employees and hosted a number of focus groups, which I'm starting to see a few familiar faces from our Zoom screen. So I appreciate you all so much for participating in these efforts uh, to allow us to learn more about your institution. Uh, today is a part of our professional learning experiences that are a part of the audit. Um, and uh, we'll spend time, like Maria said, working in uh, communicating and engaging with our classified educators, um, our faculty and managers, uh, and. Uh, here in live, and then we'll also have a couple of sessions later on this semester uh, on Zoom as well. And so the, the idea was really that we kind of learn a little bit more about the institution as a whole, and then also follow up to provide support in where there might have been some opportunities to continue to um, engage in advance. So I'm going to share a couple of uh, the overarching themes from the, the findings, um, share some highlights, and then we'll talk about the PD sessions. So some overarching themes um, regarding the equity audit. The first was around this idea of clarity and connection. Uh, we saw that there is really a lot of intention around being able to advance equity uh, priorities on campus, uh, whether it be in uh, some of the documentation, resolutions, and things like that that have been shared out loud. Um, however, there seemed to be kind of a, a lack of guidance on how to actually do it. Right, um, and so uh, between kind of intention and action, there there's a bit of a gap, um, and so we're here to, as a part of our work uh, with the professional learning experiences, to try to maybe close that gap a little bit and give some really practical application opportunities to really explore what we can all do, kind of within our own locus of control, to really support the efforts taking place on campus. The second uh, overarching theme was around this idea of developing an equity ecosystem. But what this is, is really this, this notion that all of us on campus are really responsible for advancing the equity efforts, right? No matter where you sit, your role on campus, if you have direct face, uh, facing engagement with students or not, we're all a member of the SMC community. And so therefore this uh, goal to advance equity efforts is a responsibility of all of us. Um, however, because the efforts have really been siloed on campus, that idea of connecting across divisions, departments, disciplines, roles has really kind of come at a form of tension. Um, and so this idea of being able to create this interconnected network of supports um, hasn't happened um, as fully as it probably could. And so we really think that, um, so we wanted to highlight that just as being able to, to call it out and to name it and to say that this is a real area of, of growth and strength uh, for the campus, that if we're able to really come together and think about all of our different roles, places, positionalities, and what have you on campus and where we sit and being able to advance the work, then if we can do that collectively, it will be so much more impactful to really what our overall goals are. And that is what's connected to this final uh, overarching theme around being able to, um, to really uplift all of the great work to um, support the amazing programs and offerings, the, the strong reputation that SMC has. If we're kind of working in these silos, then we can only really kind of move that needle so much. It really takes the collective effort of everyone to be able to make this big impactful change on campus and so that we're able to achieve our goals. And so we want to be able to support the college in, in doing that and really kind of coming together to think about how we can be stronger as an entire institution. Um, and so those are the overarching themes. I wanted to also share some highlights because we know that there's great work on campus. I mean, clearly the energy from this morning <laughs> shows that folks are excited to be here, excited to be back and get back into the swing of things. And so we want to honor and uplift the amazing work that has taken place thus far as well. 
And so first we wanna just acknowledge the development of the EPI. Not all colleges have kind of a space to really center equity work on campus. And so it's important that there is some dedicated focus around being able to do so. And the EPI is a great example of what that looks like. The PD that has already taken place with uh, experts and thought leaders kind of nationally, especially in the state of California, such as USC Center for Urban Education, uh, the Center for Race and Equity, CCL, and the Men of Color Initiatives and things like that are all really great fundamental opportunities to expand our learning, our growth kind of challenge, uh, our, our ways of doing business um, in order to strengthen our processes and our approach. Um, the update to the uh, course outlines of records, the student learning outcomes, PLOs, all of those things are really important because that's how we assess kind of our, our impact, right? And so if the things that we're using to assess the impact are really stated and grounded in kind of a more traditional uh, framework, then it doesn't really push us to be able to, to move forward. And so the fact that that type of stuff is being updated is incredibly important. I think a big thing that I want to mention here is that as a whole, students are, are feeling supported and valued at SMC, and, and that's really kind of what's most important at, at the end of the day, right? If we can make sure that our students are feeling like this is a place where they're welcome, where they belong, um, and they're feeling valued, um, then, then that is a fantastic starting point. All of the other components are really able to add to that to ensure that not only do they feel welcome, but they're also able to be successful. Um, and so I wanted to mention that as well. And then finally, the last point on here is just the pride that uh, we received and we saw and we heard from folks about their work here at SMC. The very last question that we asked in all of our focus groups is, what do you love most about working at SMC? And everybody said, the students and my colleagues, right? And so clearly folks are, they love to be here, right? High five, wonderful, yes. Uh, <laughs> they love to the job that they do, right? Making an impact, working in education, working at this college and this community is so impactful. And it's, I mean, just from the engagement this morning, we can see that there's so much excitement and joy of being here. Um, and that is really tremendous and fantastic. So the audit as a whole had a bunch of different recommendations. Uh, some were around capacity building, some around PD and what have you. Today, our focus is really about being able to create the space for uh, dialogue, for application of some of these ideas and concepts to think about our own practices um, and be able to facilitate those sessions uh, within team settings so you can collaborate with one another in order to really think about how do you want to be able to enter the spring semester um, maybe there's some thoughts, some ideas that you can take into your practice starting today. So uh, at noon or at 12.30 or so, we'll be meeting with our instructional faculty. At 2 o'clock, we'll be focused on uh, student-ready educators, so thinking of those as student services and support. Um, we'll end the day with our managers, uh, and then we have some virtual sessions that are coming up later on uh, this month and next month as well. So we're really excited to engage with you all um, to have these conversations and really start to unpack and think about, you know, what are the things that we might be able to do within our own practices, again, to make that institutional change so that we can uh, support the students that are here with us. So thank you all for participating in the equity audit. Uh, we look forward to engaging with you all this afternoon, and I'm going to turn it back over to Maria. Thank you, Lauren, and thank you, Katrina, and uh, Lasana Hotep, who unfortunately couldn't be with us here today due to illness. Want to let you know that you all receive the, an access to the equity audit via bulletin, as well as if you go to smc.edu slash EPI, just look for us. It's on our website as well. Thank you. And now I'd like to bring up Cyrus. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we're actually going to do another raffle. So get your raffle tickets out.
They're on the red card. Yeah. If your team misses cash, you're wrong. <laughs> What's the prize, Cyrus? All right, we got a beautiful pour, coffee pour over set. We we could always use more caffeine around here. So, um, so the lucky winner of this fancy pour over set is the last three digits zero seven one. Let's do another one. <laughs> yes, yeah, don't worry. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, very similarly, last three digits, one, seven, one. No, no takers, no takers. We're gonna keep doing this again. <laughs> You know, Dr. J, if we tell them there's cash in there, maybe they'll come up with enough. Maybe they'll say it enough. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Just a thought. Just a thought. Last three digits. Zero, four, three. Yeah. There we yeah. go. So um, I have the dubious task of starting this lovely slide, talking about a professional development, a strategic plan of, from 2022 to 2027. Yeah, what's that? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of people who's going to be coming up on stage real quick to be talking about uh, what that professional development plan looks like. And um, I would actually like to invite them all to the stage right now. Yeah. Okay, come on, everybody with the red, everybody with the uh, teal shirt. Yes. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, these lovely group of people have been put, uh, have been working together for over about like uh, two years, trying to develop this uh, new strategic uh, strategic professional development plan that we do have at SMC. And so, we we definitely hear you. We're always making Spring Professional Development Day, Fall Professional Development Day, as well as our calendar of offerings uh, that much more dynamic, that much more interesting. And so. Um, we're just we're just taking the time to just say like training for special development offerings at SMC at the college needs to be re envisioned to meet our current and emerging needs for all of our employees more effectively. And so one of the things that we're doing right now is trying to also build the community that comes with it. And so this fantastic community is is, is uh, part of the tapestry of uh, uh, with uh, training and development um, at its helm. I'm sorry. And so um, along the way, uh, we there are a couple of professional development committees. Oh, did I skip a slide? There we go. <laughs> um, I, I'll actually I'll turn it over to Leah to, uh, to talk about this specific slide for us. So we present this on Zoom. So then you get your notes right in front of you. So you're like, oh, it's my turn. And you now it's scary because we're looking at you. Um, you're not scary, just we're scared. Um, what about these committees? Because these committees have been around forever. These committees are going to stay. They're still going to do what they're doing, but they're going to be doing less logistics and more content help in terms of bringing the content that you guys are making out to people and, and creating new content, hearing, listening to what you want. And where are we now with this uh, re-envisioning of professional development? Well, it's a lot to do this. So we are in very early stages of it. And these are our goals right now is creating a strategic plan, which is almost complete, and uh, synthesizing everything that's being done out here that we want to make, uh, that we want to promote and bring. Good morning, everyone again. So we have reimagined our professional development central hub 
Um, so we're no longer calling it the Center for Teaching Excellence. We are now calling it the Equus Center, right? <laughs> so it is our equity-minded professional innovation center. We understand that's a mouthful, but we we specifically chose those words and talked about them for a series of meetings to land on Equity Minded Professional Center, otherwise known as the Epicenter, largely because it is our professional development um, that's going to be offered through the center will be rooted in equity minded principles. It will be focused on professional growth for all employees, faculty, classified educators and managers. We have not had a centralized hub here at uh, SMC and it's history, long history here of one particular one center dedicated to the professional growth of all of their employees. Um, and uh, we also wanted to make sure that we had innovation in there because we're hoping and we we also know that the great work that you're all doing in your respective areas will not only lead to innovative um, opportunities, but also transformational change for how we um, interact with our students and how we interact with ourselves and the service that we provide to our students. So we are now the epicenter. And our IFE or Epicenter Steering Committee, which you see here, members of, I don't know if we have all of them here, but yes, um, we worked uh, very diligently in trying to develop a mission and a vision statement. So our vision at the Epicenter is it strives to build community and capacity among all employee groups to make SMC a place where everyone belongs and realizes their potential. I know we often talk about creating a sense of belonging and community for students, um, for them to fulfill their self-defined goals. But we as employees also want to feel a sense of belonging and care here at the institution, as well as fulfill our own self-defined professional goals. So that this epicenter will be able to help support that. And our mission, oh, I'm sorry, I never, sorry. Yeah. Vision. And then our mission. The mission is uh, the epicenter supports the equity mission of SMC and the vision for success through coordination and facilitation of professional learning and growth opportunities grounded in the principles of equity mindedness by offering a variety of opportunities tailored to the needs of all employees. The epicenter strives to be the center of growth, development, and professional excellence for all, while also cultivating community and joy in our daily work. We are often here more than we are with our families. So we need to create joy in the work that we do on a day and remember our purpose for why we're here. We're at a higher educational institution and we often come to these institutions because we have a purpose. Um, so let's be driven by that purpose and let's find daily joy in that purpose while we're at work. And we're hoping to help support that as well. So now I'll turn it over to Cindy. Uh, so working assumptions. The IFP Steering Committee believes that SMC as a learning institution should be a model of continuous growth and improvement, professional development and training for all employee groups to better serve our students. All employees, classified professionals, faculty and managers want to improve their practice to better serve our students and particularly our Black and Latin students. All employees can get better at our jobs. It is possible to learn and grow and improve over time. And all employees can transfer and actualize new knowledge with support. This plan assumes that all employee groups will be able to uh, and encouraged will be encouraged to participate in professional development and training activities. This is what we've been wanting for a long time. So I'm very happy to present this slide. So there's still going to be a lot of things happening in other areas too. So we're still going to have all the HR based trainings, the compliance things that we need to do on a regular basis. We're still going to have, we're still, we still expect that departments will do your own ongoing trainings for processes related to your department. But the leadership has, has been really strong in this process. We have two faculty co-leads, Leah Hall and Jessica Crew. Okay. Some contact professional colleagues, Aaron O'Neill, Danelle Swanson, and Amanda Bellatore. And management colleagues, Silvana Carrion and Tristan Elliott. 
The shared leadership model we envision is, is one where there's going to be ongoing rotation of the co-leads over time. That these co-leads will spend, we spent already lots of time this year and we'll continue to spend time next year working on a lot of logistics about the structure and the content. And we'll rotate over time. We have more employees throughout the district opportunities to participate in this role. And so on. So coming soon, um, designing and facilitating workshop series for all of our constituent groups. Um, a physical and digital library that would compose of events today, but also events that we've had in the past and events that we'll have in the future. Drop in hours for collaboration and consult, um, consolidation. And we're also creating and developing a master calendar where everyone can review events that will be happening across campus and supporting the work for PDC and CPDC. This is the change that you wanted and we all need. So cultivating community and joy in our daily work, professional development and training for all employees. So our team, well, sorry. So our team has continued to expand. And so we have a much more um, representative group of all employee groups. And I also wanna give a big thank you to our pioneers who started with us. Um, you're still with us in spirit. And I'm particularly delighted to share with you that we have kind of our first um, Epicenter sponsored event. Um, the new faculty committee um, worked with us. Thank you so much, Erin and Emily for bringing this to us. Um, as an opportunity to bring a dynamic and um, well sought out speaker, um, Dr. Bettina Love. And we then reached out to our different equity focused um, professional faculty, professional development groups on campus and invited them to attend as well. There is a limited capacity, but we're not there yet. So for those of you in our collaborating groups who haven't yet RSVP'd, now is your chance. And um, we do have space for additional attendees. So if you would like to participate and you are not in one of these collaborating groups, you are welcome. Um, I will be sending the link out tonight for tomorrow's presentation. Again, it is invitation only, I mean, RSVP only. Um, so you have to RSVP to get the link. So thank you so much. And we hope to have more of these opportunities, these um, synthesizing opportunities across different groups um, and across all employee groups going forward. So thank you. Thank you very much. One more time, round of applause for the Captain Center. I don't know about you, but it's time for another winner. Here we go. And this person is going to get something. Oh, is that a water bottle? It's an expensive water bottle. So there's your cash. All right, now here we go. Ah, uh, last three digits are one seven zero. One seven zero. One se I felt like the last one was one seven one, wasn't it? That I I just grabbed it. I didn't do it. One seven zero. No. All right, here we go. Next is zero one four. Zero one four. Going once, twice. Very Congratulations, you've got an expensive water bottle. <laughs> Use it well. <laughs> All right, I would like to bring up Caring Campus. Is Caring Campus? Caring campuses. Where? Now, if this were like the price is right, she's coming on down. Maybe in her time. 
but going to present us with a lot of great information about Karen. How are you doing today, Jocelyn? Oh, sweetie. Oh, sweetie. Okay. Okay. I'm on drugs right now. So, I'm very strong. so today at 3 30, um, the core campus, caring campus um, committee, which is a team that I'm a part of, we went through training to discuss what the caring campus initiative is. We've already started implementing. Um, that plan. Um, some of you are already wearing your name tags. Obviously, I'm not a good example. I don't have my own right now. Um, but um, we're going to go through it specifically with um, classified. If you're a classified employee, we'd really love to have you here because you are the backbone, really, of the college and having real authentic uh, communication with students. Oftentimes, students spend more time with classified employees than they spend with their faculty members. And so um, we're here to kind of connect each other um, to one another. So I'd really love to have um, the, as many classified employees as possible come to that. We are going to give a presentation as to what the Caring Campus Initiative is and also how you are already implementing it and how we can further in, implement that into the campus. It's really about just building connections with students. Um, all of us know the um, enrollment um, numbers are really, really low and our persistence levels are really low. Specifically, I work with black and brown students and um, in those areas, that's a really nice area of opportunity for us as SMC to making people feel welcome and cared for at the campus. And so that's what the Caring Campus Initiative really is. And um, I like all of you to come out 305, I'm sorry, 330 at room um, HSS 105 or give a presentation. And you can always um, also discuss areas of concern or how you um, can also um, participate with the um, Caring Campus Initiative. So I look forward to seeing all of you there. I think I covered everything. All right, everyone. So uh, we're at the segment of our morning uh, session that uh, I'd love the opportunity to introduce, or sorry, introduce, but also bring on uh, Dr. Jeffrey for uh, the opening, uh, sorry, the presidential addresses that we have for uh, Spring PD Days. So um, without um, further ado, I'm actually just going to ask Dr. Jeffrey uh, uh, to, uh, to, oh, to be welcomed on stage. So thank you all. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, the music that was playing when I walked up was Jill Scott. Anybody know Jill Scott? That sister's bad. She's <laughs> awesome. But um, the song is called Living My Life. It's called Golden. And it's how she says she's living her life like it's golden. And it, uh, there's a Cool video online that shows all of the ways, thank you, that she uh, has tried to capture the aspects of her life, the people who are important to her, that motivate her to continue to live her life like it's golden. So when I was asked for a walk up song, I couldn't think of anything better than that. And I have a chance to go and see her perform um, quite a few years ago uh, and realized how out of sync I was. 
with concerts only. <laughs> and um, also how out of sync I was with the whole scope of her music. But it actually uh, made me think about the things that I needed to do to be, to be more up to date in a lot of areas. You know how you think you're hip and you think you know what's going on. And then some kind of way uh, you discover that you're not as with it as you thought you were. So that happened to me at the Jill Scott concert. That's not in my script, but I just felt the need to share. <laughs> so first I want to acknowledge that we have some guests with us today and they're here to my right and in the audience to my right, and they may actually end up, have ended up in some other places in the audience as well. But these are members of our general advisory board for Santa Monica College. And our general advisory board for SMC was formed in 1970. So it's really been with us, uh, our community for quite a while, but they serve as a bridge to Santa Monica College's community of neighbors, professionals, business owners, and civic leaders. So TAB folks, wave. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for being with us this morning. I don't think any of you have ever been to a gathering like this for the college. So we're really proud to have you as members of GAB. And we're also very honored that you made time to be with us today. Uh, for those, uh, anybody been on GAB since 1970? <laughs> they would admit it. <laughs> we still have some open seats as well. Um, Dr. Carter, I see you standing over there as a chair, actually between me and Paige. Uh, Vice President Bonvenuto, I don't know if you want a chair, but there's a chair right here next to the, uh, in the center, it's easy to get to. Just don't knock over there. Looks like one of our technology pieces. But if any of you want seats, there are some extra, some seats here in the room. And I also, uh, Cyrus, uh, I wanted to acknowledge that if anybody was in the other room and the number that you called was their number, how would we know? We would, but uh, I have <laughs> the number on record. How can you forget 095? <laughs> okay, because if you were in the other room and your number was called, check with... Ryan or with Cyrus, because we don't want you to be left out just because you didn't make it into the main room. One of the things we're trying to do a better job of here at SFC is including people where they are in different segments of the organization. And, and right now let's practice that with acknowledging people who are in our overflow area. With the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, mostly in our rearview mirror, mostly in our rearview mirror, along with its destruction, disruption, and dare I say, opportunities for reinvention, we can now focus more squarely on the vision of rebuilding the core elements of SMC's face-to-face, um, -face environment while capitalizing on what we now know about teaching, learning, and operating virtually. Today, we wanted uh, the Spring Professional Development Day to focus on bringing us back to basics, meeting with each other in person, with a common goal of reconnecting, resetting, reigniting our collective energy and renewed emphasis, on rebuilding our internal community and meeting the needs of SMC students. I write my scripts with support, uh, with great intentionality, and it's hard to deliver the message and stay on time when I go off track, when I go off script. But I also know that it's distracting when I have to look up and down, but I want to make key points. So as I look down at the script, please know 
that this, these are not just words written on paper. This is a message that's intended to make, to make points and is intended to identify areas that relate to how we, how I want to encourage us as a college to move forward together. So as I thought about what I wanted to say today, I reflected on not just the connections, we've missed out on these past few years, and it has been three years, three years, but also on the people that we've lost, our colleagues, our friends, our loved ones. So let's pause to pay respect and to acknowledge our SMC colleagues who have passed since spring of 2020, to honor their memory and acknowledge the impact they made on SMC and the lives of our students. They were people who lived life like it was golden. We thank them for what they contributed to SMC. And thank you for allowing space in today's meeting to remember them. And thank you to uh, HR for helping us identify the names um, so that we could capture the complete list for you. If there's someone who is not mentioned on the list, please notify my office because we try to get this information to keep up with it because it is important. These are people who are part of SMC, who were part of SMC, they remain part of SMC even in their past. The relationships that we have built in person have significantly led to every good thing that contributes to Santa Monica College's reputation, which is a reliable reputation. We are highly regarded as a brand of quality and excellence, well-known statewide, nationally, and even internationally. We are, unit, we are united in dedication and purpose, creating the institution's well-known reputation for innovation and an above and beyond commitment to student success. My thanks to each of you for everything you do and everything you did during the pandemic, not just for SMC, but for what you did at home in your respective communities. We have all been essential personnel in one way or another. What has happened over the last three years has been an awesome disruption, but it's also been an awesome motivator. It's given us a chance to see SMC in brand new ways. It has given us a chance to really think deeply about who we are and who we can be. So um, I just know that I'm not gonna get through all of this, but I do wanna say thank you to everyone. And I wanna acknowledge everyone as the essential worker. And I would like for you to join everyone as the essential worker. And I would like for you to say with me, I am essential, you are essential, and turn to somebody and look at them. <laughs> and then end with, we are all essential. And I usually hate these kind of things. <laughs> They're not cheesy, but, but I feel like we need it. Okay, so first one, I am essential. I am essential. Let's do that one again. I am essential. In the other room, I hope you're doing it too. 
Second, turn to someone and look at them and say, you are essential. You are essential. And last, we are all essential. We put emphasis on the we and the all. We are essential. Feels good, doesn't it? I want to acknowledge that our emergency operations team went into you know, the work that they were doing 24 seven, right from the very beginning of the pandemic. They were on site to our faculty, our professional classified colleagues who, who pivoted to teach and deliver our, um, uh, to teach and deliver our services as our faculty and our classified professionals. Those who helped in enrollment efforts, even during the pandemic to try to keep enrollment up, people who volunteered with our food drive, our diploma drive-through efforts, those who ensured classrooms and offices were cleaned using the highest standards to ensure our safety and so much more, thanks to you all. Among us, I know many found surprising moments of connection with students and colleagues during the pandemic. So I want to create a little moment here for you to share with us if you, if something happened that you found surprising, a moment of connection you didn't expect, something you learned about yourself or someone that you thought you knew. Anybody have any surprising moments of connection? If you did, raise your hand and shout it out. Anybody, surprising moments of connection. Think about it. Yes. Yeah, so um, somebody I work with is from New Orleans. And could you pitch in a little oh, bit? Yes, yes. So someone I work with, she's from New Orleans. She's also my student. And she was talking about how she only knew two Black people who went to USC, me and a man named Solomon. And I said, who's Solomon? And she goes, so his name is Solomon Matthews, and he's also from New Orleans. He shows me a picture. He was my counselor at USC. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are the odds? Like, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome story. Thank you. Thank you. And would you say your name and where you where you reside within the college yes. structure? Uh, my name is Jasmine Ravels. I am um, a writing instructional assistant uh, at Drescher. Anybody else have a surprising moment of connection, kind of an aha experience? Yes. Uh, I that, like, I was, uh, uh, same elementary school. Wow. First week. Nice. Awesome. And you, you are in which area again? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a surprising moment of connection? Something you didn't anticipate, it just kind of popped up and it was like, wow, that's cool. Anybody else? Well, I'll share one with you that I had. I went to visit my nephew in Maui. First time I'd ever been to Maui. Uh, and, you know, people say, I don't know, your first time to Hawaii is my first time. And my nephew has lived there for many years, and he recently had a baby, he and his wife, and I wanted to go and meet the baby. My sister passed during the pandemic, uh, not from COVID, but she passed and never got a chance to meet this grandbaby. So I went to visit uh, during the holiday, and the surprising moment of connection was, number one, seeing my sister reflected in this little baby, and then number two, my nephew said, you know, Kathy, granddaddy, my father, would be really happy to know that you're here in Hawaii because he used to tell us all the time that when he was stationed in the military, he was stationed in Maui area and that he wanted to take the family from Oklahoma, take all the kids, there were five of us, take us to Hawaii. But my mother didn't want to leave Oklahoma City. 
imagine that. <laughs> and so she wouldn't go and she wouldn't take the, the family. And my dad wanted us to have this phenomenal experience, um, which would have been huge for us. And my nephew says, you know, granddaddy would really be happy to know that you finally made it to Hawaii. Well, when he said that, I just, I, I always thought he was the sweetest kid anyway. <laughs> I just endeared him to be even more. So I've had some ahas. You have all had ahas, whether you share them here today or not. But we have learned many valuable lessons during the pandemic. We've learned many things about how to exist. And one was for this college as a collective, that business ed and online learning is here to stay and is a learning modality that is desirable for a growing number of students. Flexible online learning options help SMC be even more accessible and equitable in meeting students' needs and serving students who might have taken many buses and driven over long distances um, to reach one of our campuses. Our Academic Affairs Division intentionally developed a flexible course schedule, balancing on-ground and distance education courses for spring. And 10% of the on-ground schedule includes hybrid options for the first time. So as we resume more operations face-to-face, -face, we are seeing evidence of the benefits of being together, receiving more requests from students for on-ground instruction. So in fall of 2023, the Professional Development Committee and the Classified Professional Development, um, actually in fall of 2022, the Professional Development Committee and the professional, uh, Classified Professional Development Committee designed uh, hybrid professional development schedules. They did it again for this spring. And we're doing that with the intention of trying to reach people in a variety of different ways. However, I should say, and in fall of 2023, we're going to bring SMC more and more on ground. We can do this. We have to do this. We've tried to be responsible. We've tried to be a concerned and caring organization, but we cannot stay remote in the way that we have been. There was a purpose for it at the time. We need to start to bring our operation more fully present face-to-face. -face. That does not mean we will not have an online presence, a virtual presence. As I said, that's here to stay and it's here to grow but it will not replace what we have when we're like this. So I just want to kind of put that out there so that we all will start to know that while we have remote opportunities for uh, working at home, for teaching classes, for students to take classes, we will also increase our presence on ground, our footprint at all of our sites. We will become a ro more robust uh, on-ground face-to-face organization. That is what we need to be for our students. That is what we're going to have to be in order to, uh, to continue to grow and thrive as an organization. A special thank you to the Caring Campus Initiative team. Doing some amazing work. And you heard from Jocelyn earlier, and you'll hear more uh, throughout the academic year about the Caring Campus Initiative. Our Malibu campus, wow. 
some ground. Um, that was many years in the planning and we achieved a historic accomplishment to open up that center. And anyone here from the Malibu Center, I saw Alice earlier, so wave and acknowledge if you're at the Malibu Center. On February 13th, the Malibu Center opened. Over 150 students walked through the doors on the first day. Over 400 students are enrolled in 30 classes for credit, non-credit, emeritus, and community education classes. So we're really, really grateful um, to all of the individuals who are part of that operation. And it's a great place to hold meetings. So it's in Malibu, but it belongs to all of us. So if you want to schedule a meeting over there, you can do that. It's, it's a beautiful site. You'll be very, very proud when you see it. We're grateful to the community support that we received from all the members of our community. The passage of a bond, we successfully passed the bond. And I want to acknowledge the leads for the bond measure. Sherry Davis was the chair of our volunteer committee. Thank you to Don Gerard, who is our Senior Director of Government Relations. And uh, Dr. Lizzie Moore, our Dean of Institutional Advancement. These folks are to the outside. Past bond measures provided the funds for the construction of our Malibu campus. But our most recent bond, will help take SMC to a whole new level. A ribbon cutting ceremony for um, Malibu will, is already scheduled for April 22nd. So please put that on your calendar. This is really going to be a fun day, April 22nd, starting at 1230 uh, noon. There will be family friendly events that will feature live classroom demos, tours, and much more. So many other events are going to be happening at um, Malibu. So uh, please try to get out and visit and say hello to your colleagues there. Um, there are a number of other things I have in my remarks. I'm gonna stop here and we will make my script, which is awesome. So when you get it, read it. <laughs> it's got tons of good stuff in it. I promise you. And uh, Letty, are you still in the room? Letty, okay. Would you bring me that very heavy purse that you have? She's holding on to it. So she says, I'll take it, I'll hold on to it. So it's very, very heavy. Very. <laughs> <laughs> So, Brian, you know, uh, pull one of those numbers. Pick a number. Pick a number. Um, <laughs> make it cash. <laughs> or maybe look under your... Okay, I have a can of uh, Pellegrino water. <laughs> have a government issued COVID test. <laughs> a two <-pack>. <laughs> <laughs> There's something else good. What is this? Oh, a can. Let's get the Okay, you got a number. Okay, what's the number? Ah, uh, seriously, I can't contain myself. I'm amazed. I want that Pellegrino bag. <laughs> uh, 
is zero, six, three. Very twist, one hundred dollar bill. The same department. I'm trying to share you my share with you my fellow freedom. I'm trying. Would you pull another number? Oh, another. Oh, my goodness, I'm changing it up good from it. All right. Well, this is for the Campbell food. The number is, oh, Lord, uh, two, two, zero, 220. Who's got 220? Over 220. Nice try there, man. 220. That might be someone in the overflow. Go get him. Is there a 220 here? There's no 220. Should I pick another one? All right. Hold on to 220. All right. All right. Here we go. Oh, Wait, they're coming right now. There were, the 220 was in the overflow. Who's the name of the person? By the way, Alan Kuykendall, HR. <laughs> Lois from what department? Yes. This, this, I mean, this is Campbell's soup we're talking about. This this is yes sir. Imagine she's drinking over here. And Brian, would you read one more number? One more number. Two twenty. Okay, and here's the here's one more number. Lord have mercy, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, I never got a ticket for myself because I want you to get the prizes. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen. One. Do you have? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. One. Nine. Five. No, oh, you faked me out up there. One nine five. Someone, is it Janet? Janet, is it you? Janet, you just won a COVID test. My COVID COVID nineteen antigen health test. It's a rapid test for the detection of COVID with a nasal swab specimen. Let me just make sure this Here is 195. This is 195. She gets the COVID test and the 
blow away. And, and where is the overflow room? Where's the overflow room? Okay. <laughs> They're not coming, but it was Lois, what was the name? Bob Squid. Bob Squid. Okay, well, when when Lois shows up and verifies her number, yeah. it's, it's, there will be something special for her. Okay. So this is why you should come to professional development. <laughs> But I'll, I'll end with a couple of things. This is in my remarks. Um, and you'll read it and it will make sense to you. But I traveled. I mentioned Maui. I had another first time experience. I took a trip, a big trip to the other side of the world. I went to Egypt. Uh, some of you may have been to Egypt before. I had not made a major trip like that before. And uh, while I was there, I prepared, and this is my travel documents and where I kept cash. And so the money that I had on me today was money that came back with me. I took it, didn't spend it, brought it back. So I'm really, really pleased to be able to uh, put that out for those whose numbers were called. Uh, it's a nice way for me to extend to you a little piece of my trip to Egypt. And also an opportunity for me to share with you just a little bit of the experience. First, I wanna acknowledge again, the importance of being with our students, not just physically, present, but energetically present with our students and with each other. Aha, here she is. But you might want this other gift that we have for her. What is it, Dr. Jeffrey? She has something else, too, not just uh, Campbell's. Yes, gift. there is something There's else. There's something else in there, too. I, I had it a minute ago. Uh, let me make sure this is two. Wait, I got to make sure. Two, two, zero. That's $100 and split key with Pam Campbell soon. Congratulations. Congratulations. And thank you. Thank you for being part of our, our audience today, being part of our SMC family. So many years ago, I was watching television. I used to watch television a lot, much less these days. And a commercial came on the screen, and I may have told this story, and some of you may have heard it before, because it's something that always comes to mind for me when I think about what we do at, at Santa Monica College. And the commercial was uh, of a, a, a father with a, a child, I assumed it was the father's child, standing on the side of a swimming pool. The dad was in the water. And the kid was standing on the side of the water with water wings on and just looking panicked. And the dad had his arms out trying to get the, the child to jump into the water. And the kid wouldn't do it. And at one point, the dad just enthusiastically said, jump. And the baby looked, he says, I've got you, I've got you, jump. And the child leaped into the water, into the water floating and kicking, and the father grabbed him and hugged him and said, you did it, you did it. And then the tagline for the company, which was Hilton Hotels, <laughs> came across the screen and it said, when people feel comfortable, they can do anything. 
And that's what I like to think about us here at SMC. We make our students feel comfortable. That should be our goal, to make them feel comfortable in the learning environment, to let them know that we have the supports that they need. We are there to help them. Now I want to go back to Egypt for just a moment. While I was there, I noticed, and this was something I had seen only one other time, when I was in Ghana many years ago. Um, but the streets going in the same direction had no lanes. Streets were wide, but no lanes. And for those that had lanes, the lanes were really faded. There had been no attempts to try to repaint them. So the traffic just flows and moves, and there are very, very, very few stoplights. <laughs> you could drive for miles and not hit a stoplight. So I was watching how the traffic was moving, the lanes filled with all manner of transportation vehicles, cars, buses, trucks. You can't tell in this photo, but if you could enlarge that and look into the photo, you'll see people walking. You'll see buggies that are horse-drawn, bicycles, motorcycles, scooters, carts carrying fresh-cut sugar cane being drawn by a horse or a mule. Again, people walking, all moving at different paces, watching out for each other, but yet continuously moving in the same direction. You might hear someone honk a horn that's attached to their vehicle or a horn that they're carrying to get the attention of someone who might be crossing over into their paths, but things just keep moving. So my takeaway from that is that no one is told to get out of the way that they're too close or that they don't belong on the streets. No one is made to feel like there's another pathway they should be on. No one is made to feel out of place. Space is made for everyone who needs to travel and move forward. And I like to think at SMC that we make room and make space for everyone who comes to us and who needs to access education to help them get to where they want to go because that is the same direction that everybody's moving in when they come to Santa Monica College. So with that in mind, I would like to encourage you to make space, to welcome, to embrace our students, to embrace colleagues as you support and help them in the work that we all do collectively as we are all essential, as we try to help everyone live their life like it's golden, and to treat our jobs like our jobs and like our work at SMC is a golden opportunity. So with that, thank you so much for being here today. For those who have a little bit of Egypt with them, enjoy that. Enjoy that because I could have had Egyptian pounds in my purse. I won't even tell you what they're worth compared to the US dollar. But if you have chances to take international travel, go somewhere else. See how things are, are happening in other parts of the world. It will really make you appreciate what we have here. Even if what we have here is not ideal, it is something to appreciate and to value. Value where you are, wherever you are on the planet. And do things that support your life to keep it golden and do things to help make the lives of other people better and golden too. Thank you. I must tell you, thank you, Dr. Jeffrey, for the inspiring words and, of course, this Pellegrino.
Thank you. Oh my gosh. Woo. I wasn't expecting that. That was a surprise, but I, I, I thank you. Thank you. I had money. Yeah, there's nothing more of a surprise than Pellegrini. Um, right now, folks, before our, our keynote speaker, I would like everyone to please stand up, stretch a little bit, and move in. Move in. Move into your seat. So if there's like a vacant seat there, move into that. I want the uh, seats on the aisle. I want those free. Move in so that there is a seat on the edge that's free because there's a lot of people that are standing up and I'd like them to take a seat. <laughs> Hi, uh, Oh, yeah. I <laughs> Oh, we have to for that. Oh, okay. No, I have Oh, one of those handheld mics. Yeah, one of those handheld mics. All right, please. Okay. Right here. Okay, everyone, we're going to we we we'll be starting momentarily. If you can please 
just move in. We are trying to get those folks that are in the overflow room. We're trying to get them in here as well, too. So if you've got seats on the side of you, that's great. Oh, okay. You're more than welcome to sit on the on the stage if you'd like to, or um next to the stage. Next to the stage. I apologize. No. Everyone, if you could please take your seats, we are about to start. Are you all set? Okay. All right, folks, if you could please take your seats right now, we are going to proceed with our keynote speaker. All right. All right, we have lots of seats available, folks. Looks like we've got, oh, we've got that, great. Is the hand help? Oh, for me. Oh, testing one. Ah, got it, got it. All right, everyone, if you can please take your seats right now. We are about to have our keynote speaker. Again, if you are standing, we have plenty of seats. I mean, I can see so many seats available. Oh, yeah, Dr. Jeff. And while people are getting settled, uh, I don't have any more money to give out. But I do want to acknowledge that the design on the t-shirts for the epicenter, the epicenter design, that was created by Paige Glaze. And, and Paige, I don't have the money, but... Um, I mean, I do. It's it's a ten pound Egyptian note, but you don't want that unless you're going to go to Egypt. But um, I I'll reach out to you later for something. But I just wanted to acknowledge you today. I think that design is awesome. So thank you. Thank you again. We have open seats. Those of you that are not that are standing, please take a seat as we proceed with our keynote speaker. Back by popular demand, the co-chair of the Basic Needs for UC System-Wide Basic Needs Committee from Indio, California. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, that hair is a lot longer. I, I'm mine, I'm losing mine, but um, you're gaining it, so good for you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Ruben Canelo. Hi, so um, we're going to have some fun today because it's going to be a fully interactive participatory session as was requested. So we're going to have some fun here being in community with each other. And do we still have folks in the other room or is everybody here? No? They're trickling over. Okay, cool. Let them keep trickling. Um, it'll be great for us to have folks here. Uh, thank you all so much for being here this morning. Thank you for inviting me to come back. This is uh, round three of me uh, sharing quality time with y'all. How many of y'all were at the first day together? Yes, beautiful, put your hands down. How many of y'all came to day two? Yes, beautiful. How many of y'all came to both, one and two? Okay, beautiful. So we have some folks who, um, this will be their, their first uh, space with me. So. I'll do a quick um, I'll do a quick overview for you all of what we're gonna get into. 
So I'll do an introduction uh, for those of you all that this is your first time with me in the space. We're going to do a framing of what, what, what we've been focusing on this year so far. I'm going to make sure that folks are clearly understanding the frameworks that we're going to be playing with, which is healing, disability, and transformative justice and their application of them. And then we're going to go into some agreements and into some like practices for today to actually start applying some of these things. And then we'll do a closing circle. You'll know what that means. Before I start, though, and before I forget, I had the most amazing Uber experience this morning. <laughs> Have you ever gone into an Uber and the person was just meant to be your person that morning? And they just like tell you like their whole life story. And then like the life story just keeps getting better and better and better. And then at the end of the ride, after they told you their whole life story, they come out, they're like, yo, let me give you something real quick. And they give you like a super fly vest. <laughs> they're like, yo, like no promo needed. I just, I just, I just feel like really aligned with you and like everything that y'all doing. So like, I, I want to gift you this vest, right? So um, I didn't know that this person was an SMC alumna. Yeah. So um, I am going to plug. <laughs> so it's called Define Perfect. And this is a person that was born and raised in Crenshaw. Some of us know Crenshaw well, some of us not as well. But it's a person with an incredible story and uh, just poetry, just creative writing, started doing music, and now created this company called Define Perfect. And the whole invitation that, she, that they are offering to the community is throughout your life, you have had multiple invitations to define what perfect means to you because perfect doesn't mean the same thing to all of us. And some of us have complementary struggles, some of us have unique struggles, and every struggle informs like what perfect becomes on a day-to-day -day basis. Does that make sense, y'all? I thought that was so poetic. And then she hit me up with a vest, and I'm like, yo, like, I'm pretty worthy, you know what I mean? Like, so anyways, y'all, please, uh, please give some love to our community member, Tiffany. Absolutely incredible. If you're interested in her music, Tiffany Luxury is their handle. Uh, and Define Perfect is their Instagram for their clothes. It's a pop-up on Sundays at a community park. If you want to know more info, let me know. Lunch break, because I got you all. Um, okay, I've done my due diligence. Let me take this off in Um Okay, so uh, with that said, uh, promo was not included in the overview, so it's just there. But uh, that's just my way of saying thank you all. So, um, I want to do the, uh, the first thing just to make sure that we're arriving, y'all. How many of us have been introduced and are active practitioners of somatics? Anybody in here does somatics? I don't care what you do, somatics, stretching, yoga, taking care of your body, being intentional with it. Yeah, okay, beautiful. Um, I know that you all got a little bit of a break between us going up here and, and setting up, but I'm going to ask y'all to do me a favor. Um, in your seat how you are right now. I want you to sit down in the position that is healthiest and best for your body, whatever that means to you. If you have stuff on you, adjust accordingly. If you're holding someone's hand, stop it. Focus on your body. Just whatever is the healthiest position in your body. If you are standing, make sure that you're standing in a way where your body feels aligned. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody has a body and everybody has the healthiest way to be in it, okay? Whatever that means to you. Did everybody hear how there was some adjustments going on? As I said, getting your healthiest position of your body. Why aren't we conditioned to be in our healthiest positions of our body? Why do you need to be reminded? Did anybody give you instructions on how to sit here? Did anybody tell you how to position your body when you came into the auditorium? But if you adjust it, it means that for whatever the reason, something was more important to you than your body being in its healthiest position. And that's the initial invitation. Are we good so far? So now, everybody close your eyes. If that feels safe and comfortable for you, fully close them. If this may not be as comfortable for you, you can do halfway or one, whatever. <laughs> Close your eyes, ideally, because this is for you what I'm about to say. Take a deep breath and let that go. Make sure that your body actually feels its ideal way. Now scan your body from the top of your head to the bottom of your body and side to side. 
What part of your body right now feels a little bit tense? What part of your body feels a little bit uncomfortable? And take a deep breath. And send it some energy, let it go. Send energy in that direction, acknowledge it so that it feels appreciated, it feels named, it feels honored. Now scan your body from top to bottom, from bottom to top. What part of your body right now feels as ideal? It feels really good. Now take a deep breath and send it energy and gratitude. Just a little thank you. Thank you for being the part of my body that feels the best right now. Take another deep breath. And release that. Oh, I love when people yawn. That makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, open your eyes. Now do me a favor. If you are able to, um, just wiggle. Wiggle a little bit. Wiggle whatever you can wiggle, whatever wiggling means to you. <laughs> but you just did a little bit of a scanning and you sent some energy. So wiggle it out so that it like, you know, moves. Um, we all have different accessibility points. We all have different modalities of movement. We all wiggle in different ways. You can wiggle your tongue, your eyes, your cheeks, your neck, your shoulders, whatever is accessible to you. But just wiggle a little bit, okay? Beautiful. Now take another deep breath. And when you release, go. <laughs> Second time, ready? Take a deep breath. And release, I go. <laughs> and last one, ready? One, two, three. The loudest one, ready? Go. <laughs> okay. How are we feeling? Are we good? Does it feel a little bit better? Yeah. Something happens when we allow ourselves to be present with our bodies. Whatever your body is, whatever mobility it has, whatever access point it doesn't, it doesn't have, there's a healthier way of being in your body and an unhealthy way of being in our bodies. Are you with me so far? So I'm calling in to start today with inviting you to energize whatever your healthiest experience of your body is so it can be the foundation to what we're about to experience. You with me so far? Beautiful. If you need to do that in your day-to-day, -day, do that, y'all. If you come to your meeting and how many of y'all have, have like made your way into a space and you just feel the energy is off? You know what I'm talking about? You just look in your, and your body's like, oh shit. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And maybe you're not like that like performative. I am, but maybe you are not as performative. But how many of y'all have like, if you're able to say you sit down and you start like wiggling your toes, right? Or your body starts doing the tell, you start shaking your leg, if you can shake your leg. Or you start like, you know, you're adjusting a little bit more in your seat than you're used to. Because your body is telling you some shit is off in here. I don't feel my healthiest in this space. You with me? Or some of us are very head heavy. So we just start going somewhere else. Music, food, they, boo, best friend. I don't care. But you go somewhere else. You know what I'm talking about? Your last trip, wherever you went. But you're not there. Somatically, you're not there. You with me so far? So in those spaces, ask the room, hey, can we do a little wiggle real quick? Can we just like catch our breaths? I promise y'all the one to two minutes that that group is going to synchronize somatically is going to make whatever happens on the other side of that at least healthier. If some drama is about to pop off, at least it's a little bit healthier. <laughs> Does that make sense to y'all? I'll give you an example. Sometimes my parents come at me sideways and now they're trained to take a deep breath, <laughs> wiggle, and then they still say whatever they needed to say. <laughs> but you know how much it takes to infuse behavioral change patterns on your parents? It doesn't matter what they do after the wiggle. Like, I'm good. They can say whatever they want to say. And sometimes, y'all, they giggle because then they catch yourself that it wasn't that big of a deal, whatever they're about to say. It's like, yo, we need some more milk. Cool, I can go get milk. <laughs> but you're about to like invoke all of the things that you have since my childhood of why I ain't shit because there's no milk in the fridge. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, yo, milk, got it. I'll be right back. 
Okay, y'all with me so far? Beautiful. All right, here we go. So uh, very quickly, for those of you that this is your first time with me, I always start with this. I am here today because a whole lot of people took care of me. Everything that has to do with health programs, medical programs, as someone that was born with multiple disabilities, anything that has to do with like a pre-college program, community college program, professional development program, that somebody for some reason saw potential in me that I didn't see in myself at that time, I am a product, I am a seed, I am a harvest, I am a fruit of being harvested through the harshest of conditions at times and through the ideal of conditions at times, but I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for community like you and communities that hold people together that are committed to where we're going and not only where we came from. You with me so far? And that is not just a theoretical, hypothetical affirmation and gratitude. That's a very real life implication. My parents who grew up the way that they grew up, who were undocumented, who were pre-documented, who moved through that, can live today and say that both of the kids got into a UC school, right? They can now be US citizens. I honor my mother's undocumented trajectory by working with undocumented students and establishing undocumented services across public higher education. It was being part of international travel and training other countries because I am a multi-language speaker on how do we think about equity and develop institutional change projects and campaigns to move things forward all around the world and to be part of like institutional change patterns locally, statewide, national, across the country and international to make sure that what was given to me is given tenfold for the next generations. And I don't know how many of you all have the frequent experience of folks who you get to shape come back and say, thank you. I wouldn't be here today without you. And everything that I'm doing today is because of how everybody did something for me. So in this moment, I just want you to close your eyes and I want you to receive that gratitude. Because this is for you. What gratitude has been missing from your journey? Call that in and accept that in this moment. Take a deep breath and release them. Open your eyes. You know a little bit about me? Oh, another thing that I should tell you, when I get really excited because I grew up where I grew up, not my parents because they don't talk like this, but I get real excited and I may do a cuss word or two but I get to work at Berkeley. There's a phenomenal psychology department. There. And that psychology department has published three academic peer-reviewed studies that says that people who use cuss words are more reliable. They're more honest. And they are more likely to follow through on whatever shit they're talking about. So on behalf of the cussing community, you're welcome. Okay, cool. Here we go. And it's peer reviewed. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of shit talkers in that peer review. Class. All right, y'all. Here we go. Today, y'all, it's not about me talking most of the time. Today is about participatory exercises. We're going to get into it. The last two times that I've been here, after the fact and the feedback that has been shared with me is that folks don't get enough learning in public and practice spaces. And that's not just true to SMC. That's true overall, y'all. We have a culture where we're, once you get the job, the role, you're just supposed to know everything. And then when your community gives you feedback, they feel some type of way because you don't know the feedback that they just gave you and the next day after they give it to you, you're supposed to already know. That's not how that works. You know what that is called? That's called the knowledge paradox. You know what the knowledge paradox is? That once we learn something, we become vulnerable to expecting other people to also know. It's kind of like when you have somebody that you love, you really do love. So that's the foundation. You love them. 
But how many of you have somebody that you love that expects you to read their mind and know what is going on in their lives and respond to them accordingly? You know what I'm talking about? It's a little bit of that. So the knowledge paradox is just because you learn something doesn't mean that the person next to you who could be the person that has been next to you for 20 years or could be somebody who's older than you doesn't need to know what you know. And in that process of learning, we have to actively remind ourselves that we had our own learning. And oftentimes, y'all, the way that society is right now, unlearning processes. You with me so far? I know that I grew up in a community where in that community in particular, the culture and machismo has been intricately woven like a trenza, like a braid. You know what I'm talking about? I'm conscious of that. I've read it. I've gone to therapy. But that doesn't mean that now I'm saying like, oh, I'm a decolonial feminist for the rest of my life. I can't possibly be machista. <laughs> you with me so far? I have to tell myself very similarly to like, I will forever be a machista. In the same way that people who have developed a substance dependency for the rest of their lives have to identify as that. You with me so far? We grow, we develop, we heal. But just because you learn something doesn't mean that it's forever there. I wish it was like riding a bike for those, for those of us that are able to ride a bike. Or when you learn to cook your favorite thing, you can just always cook your favorite thing because it gets somewhere that you can always cook your favorite thing. Mm. When it comes to ideological, cultural, systemic, fortified experiences, it ain't that. So that's why we start with healing justice. Healing justice is the acknowledgement that we have to be intentional about naming. That's why I start with naming, releasing, and generatively shaping the harm and the trauma that we have experienced so that it can move in the direction of healing. And then whatever word lands for you all. For some of us, the word justice lands or love lands or wisdom lands. I have to put multiple languages, y'all, because some of you in the crowd right now are like, oh, here we go about talking about love. <laughs> or some of you in the crowd are going to be like, oh, what is wisdom? I don't know if we have any folks from the philosophy department. Don't go there. Stay here. <laughs> and I don't know how many of y'all have like a really tough relationship with the word justice that it doesn't land the way that is intended. I don't want you to get activated into a term, terminology battle internally right now. Just stay with the concept. You with me so far? If we have trauma and we have wounds that were generationally passed in our DNA, if you will, and then there's harm and trauma that we lived in our experience that others imposed upon us. You with me so far? And then the last one is, there's harm and trauma that we cause others. You with me so far? Healing justice has said, you can't, be of a, you can't be part of a social justice movement and you perpetuate that harm and the trauma and call it justice. In Oakland right now, that's where I live. In Oakland, there's the Angela Davis exhibit in the Oakland Museum right now. The stories that Angela and the women of the Black Panther Party are telling today. Because since the party collapsed, they haven't had a consistent audience to listen to their experience within the Black Panther Party allows you to understand why that didn't go where it intended to go. You with me so far? Yes. There was no healing at the center of the justice that they were organizing for. And you can say the same thing about the Brown Parades and so on and so forth. You with me so far? So that's why healing justice is absolutely essential. You with me? Let me get two snaps if you're with me. Beautiful. Disability justice. What is disability justice? Disability justice invites us to center two key things, dignity and belonging. Again, y'all, however that lands for you. You with me so far? We don't have time to go into each one of the terms in here, but dignity and belonging as an embraced experience, if you will. And what the invitation is, is that at all times we have the choice to design spaces where people experience dignity and belonging. At all times, we have the choice to pace whatever is going on in that space 
in a way that facilitates dignity and belonging for people. And lastly, there's a way of holding people that you can acknowledge the senses that we all experience. You with me so far? All of us have senses. All of us navigate spaces. And all of us have to experience the pace that we're moving in. Clear? If we're actively asking ourselves, how do we facilitate dignity and belonging in those three matters? Then we can say we are committed to and learning how to be more justice and disability center. So disability justice come into play. You with me so far, y'all? The last thing is this, transformative justice. The simple way of thinking about that is how do we address harm in a way that doesn't cause more harm? If somebody comes to me and they steal my wallet and then somebody's like, oh, we need some restorative justice there. We need to restore these two people that experienced that. We restore, we shake on it, we hug it, they leave. I never asked them why they stole my wallet to begin with. I never asked them if they have money, food, shelter, additional resources, that after that restoration, I'm preventing them from stealing a wallet for the next person over. Does that make sense? Transformative justice is addressing harm without causing more harm and being intentional to get to the root system so that you can pull up the factors to prevent it from happening again. Y'all with me? Y'all, these are terms that we can meditate on and practice for the rest of our lives. I don't anticipate you to become black belts today of these three things. Some of y'all were here in the day one. You saw them then. You heard about them then. We played with them then. Some of you came to day two. We did a little bit more play with them. And now it's day three. Now it's less time from the stage and more time in community. We're going to start playing with these three terms so that we can see what's going on here, what's going on in your daily experience, and what's going on in the community experience, that if we call these in, that we could potentially hold and experience healthier and better day-to-day -day and ultimately community journeys together. Does that make sense to everybody? Beautiful. Now, the way that we're going to do that is like this. Number one, there's going to be a round for ourselves to get us warmed up and ready. There's going to be a small group session, and there's going to bring it back to the entire community. Then we're going to make sure that folks have guiding questions. I don't want it to be so open-ended because then everybody goes to really beautiful locations, and you don't know if we're all having the same communal experience. Does that make sense to y'all? So these are going to be the guiding questions of the rounds. No secrets here. Very clear, very to the point, very actionable. Number one is, what needs to be addressed, changed, or improved? How can I use the frameworks to move this in a better direction? What do I need to move this in a better direction? And what will be my first two moves to energize generative momentum? Okay? Now, as we go in this direction, y'all, I want to make sure that we're clear about mapping. So body mapping is very important. Trauma mapping is very important, et cetera, et cetera. What am I inviting us to do today is zero is that you can call up something that doesn't activate you at all. Does that make sense to y'all? 10 is something that is at your core that you should not tap into today because you need a trained professional to go there. <laughs> I've learned to say we're going to map, and I've learned to invite people to keep it at a two. <laughs> no higher than a three. Because I've been in sessions, y'all, especially with like executive leadership, and they go nine as the warm up exercise for a three hour training. I'm like, yo, and it tends to be the men. We can talk about that later. You with me so far? Yeah. There's a zero, and then there's a 10. We're not going here or anywhere in that direction. We are staying down here. This is zero, this is one, this is two, maybe like a, and back. Do we have a commitment to keep it at a two? Yes, please. Can I hear you saying yes, please? Because y'all gonna be talking to each other. So it's not about me. 
That's why you are saying yes, and you're saying please to each other. You with me so far? Okay, beautiful. Now, third, the last thing is, I want to invite us to be intentional about our somatic awareness. When we're going into this rounds, I want you all to track your body and how your body is feeling and experiencing these rounds. I want you to pay attention to how you're breathing, how your head feels, how your neck feels, how your shoulders feel, how your body feels, how your hips feel, how your legs feel, whatever you can feel, because all of us have different feelings in our bodies. I want you to be intentional about your somatic experience as we're going through these rounds. Does that make sense, y'all? I'll tell you why at the end of it. Are we still sitting in the most comfortable way that our bodies can sit? Are we ready to move through a journey? Okay, now. Round one, I'm gonna put five minutes in my timer. This is time for you all. If you have something to write with, if you have your phone to type in, wherever it is that you wanna capture this, round one is gonna be just for you. I want you to invite yourself to these questions. If you don't have anybody to write with y'all, do not get activated by that, it doesn't matter. Meditate, center yourself, engage in an internal conversation with you. Do not let early childhood things come up of like, I've never had anything and I don't have something to write with. And here's another example. Whoa, that is not a level two. You went over there. You with me so far? Bring it back. All I want us to do is this is your time. Journal, type, meditate. And these are the invitations. What needs to be addressed, changed, or improved about your day-to-day -day experience that you can call up healing, disability, and transformative justice? And I'll bring this back so that the terms are going to be in front of us, okay? Just so you have that. How can I use the frameworks to move this in a better direction, whatever it is that you're summoning at a level zero, one, or two? What do I need to move this in a better direction? What will be my first two moves to energize this in a generative momentum? And notice your body as you go into this. Now, y'all, before I hit the timer, I want you to be very mindful. Where are your thoughts right now? Are you present? Are you thinking about this exercise? Or are you thinking about all the other things that you should be doing right now instead of being present with you to take care of yourself in this moment? Are you itching to be like, ah, I don't need to do this. Maybe I should go to the office. Is your mind like, like, is this really worth it? I have like a hundred things in my to-do list. Are you in your phone right now? You pop open your Gmail app instead of like your nap note app. That's what somatic scanning is. You're being invited to an exercise for you that'll benefit you. And if you go somewhere else, who has lied to you up to this point that makes it seem that your work is more important than taking care of yourself in this moment? You with me so far? Take a deep breath and let it go. Stay with you. Stay with yourselves. Ready? I'm going to do five minutes. And five minutes start in three. Yes. This is a personal, professional, both. Yes, both. Wherever you want to go. How many of us have re read Third World Feminism? Anybody? Bell Hooks, Audre Lorde, Asada, some of us, yeah. There's no such thing as personal or professional. Everything is one somatic experience. So whatever is calling you up right now, go there. Add a two, y'all. <laughs> a two or lower. So wherever you want to take it, let's take it there. Ready? Three, two, one, begin. Transformative. Let me put it back. There you go.
Rachel, this time, <laughs> do me a favor. How many of us were able to call up something? Something came up for us. How many of us were able to? Yeah, head nods, hands up. Okay, beautiful. How many of us, as we were moving through that exercise, how many of us were coming up with things that we have already acknowledged or told ourselves in the past? that we were going to do to address whatever came up. <laughs> Some of you are making faces, that's your shit. <laughs> then the question becomes, what has gotten in the way of you following up on what you already know you need to do? You with me so far? Y'all, we're so wise. We are so wise and powerful. And sometimes we use that wisdom and that power and we place it where somebody else put it. And sometimes that somebody else is ourselves. But we tell ourselves different. Does that make sense to y'all? So <laughs> don't you like slapping yourself. <laughs> How many of us came up with something that we haven't thought about before? That something came up 
new for us in this moment? How many of us came up with something that was new? Some of us? Yeah. And as you were moving through that exercise, were things coming up for you that you could actually do to address it? Yeah. Maybe you won't know. Okay. <laughs> Remember what I told y'all earlier? Remember I told y'all who tends to be the people that like to know? Isn't that funny? I used to joke, but every time without fail, as folks that tend to identify or appear to be male identified that are like, I got some real shit. You can't even address level zero. You're not even taking care of level one. You're not following through on level two. You're trying to go a level nine, my guy? With me? In front of all these people? Absolutely not. There's some healers in our communities that can do that, though. You with me so far? Okay. Let me let y'all know why I'm starting with this. You have no idea, y'all, how in the last 15 years of me working professionally and all the work that I do, out of all the work that we've been doing, oftentimes I'm in spaces where the space is sick. The people are sick. Yet, all they want to talk about and all they want to do is the work. If you're entry level, middle management don't give up. <laughs> if you're middle management, my supervisor, if you're the supervisor, my ADC, my VC, my president, my board, my trustees, the community. <clears throat> you follow? And then I'm like, how many of us are averaging our ideal sleep? <laughs> how many of us are averaging our ideal nutrition that makes us our healthiest? How many of us are exercising on average to keep you at your healthiest? How many of us are experiencing on a daily basis intentional joy and pleasure? It's the foundation, you know what I mean? Hey, have you seen those like little kid videos where like one of them is throwing a tantrum and the other one looks at them like, yo, you need a nap? <laughs> like, I love you so much and I know that this ain't you. <laughs> or like you see like little kids going to get like an apple or something and be like, yo, here. Talk to me after the apple. You know what I'm talking about? But then we become adults. And we become like in our 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. We have a, you know, 80 year old plus like president, right? President Biden is like over 80, right? Something like that, right? And the, the entire spectrum that is shaping our day-to-day -day experience. If you ask everybody, are we averaging our sleep? our nutrition, our exercise, our joy, pleasure, and fulfillment on a daily basis so that we can show up at our best capacity, who do you think, what do you think our averages are gonna be? <laughs> Some of you are changing your whole body posture right now, like sit your ass right, <laughs> relax, <laughs> take care of yourself. Does that make sense to y'all? People are like, I'm too busy to do this. I got too much in my task list. You think I'm chilling? <laughs> you think I got nothing going on in my life? But I know this. Everybody in my dad's generation are dying earlier than my dad's older generation. That's what I know. What I know is that people that went to school with me already burned out and they want nothing to do with the public sector. That's what I know. You know what I know? That younger generations want nothing to do with the world as it is right now. That's what I know. You know, what I know is that we in the public sector, especially in public higher education, what we've been doing is not working. You with me so far? 
So about the very foundation of that, I get on these stages and I do these trainings. And the first thing that I'm asking you is take care of yourself. And people start walking out of the space and people start doing work in their chairs and people start going somewhere else. Yo, we in trouble. We in big trouble, y'all. You with me so far? <laughs> So that's my way of saying thank you for staying. Thank you for moving through that exercise. And whatever those two things, y'all, that you did to start the momentum, I really want to encourage you to do those today. You with me so far? Okay. Now, let's go somewhere. Now we're going to go into the community exercise round two. Y'all, I'm just going to be very transparent. This is not the ideal space to do what we're about to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask y'all to practice your emergent strategies, in particular, intentional adaptation, which means that we're gonna intentionally adapt to the space that we are in. This is what we need to do so that we do it together. I need this room to become four corners. That's what we need to do. If you have abilities, that you should not move, I want you to stay where you are. Does that make sense to everybody? This is practicing disability justice. If you want to maximum effort at whatever that is, you want to move, move, and we're all going to be graceful with each other. You with me so far? We're going to go into four corners. The stage can be space. So I'm going to have folks over there. We're going to have folks over there. We're going to have folks over there. We're going to have folks over there. Does that make sense to everybody? We're going to get through this together. I believe in this. <laughs> This is how I'm going to facilitate that process. So you do it with me, okay? Take a deep breath and let that go. I'm gonna say a word, stay with me, don't get activated. The word is horoscopes. I am going to have your sun sign, and if you don't know what that means, just your sign of when you were born. Okay, if you don't know what your sign is, no worries. We're staying at a level two. We got you. Someone will let you know. Okay, because if you're like, what about them? Just, you know, look around the room, be like, yo, I don't know what mine is. They're gonna be like, when's your birthday? And then you're gonna be like, don't be all up on my business. Don't say the year, just say your month and your date. That's it, okay? We're with each other, I believe in us. So listen to what I'm, listen to my, the instructions, okay? I'm gonna have everybody, everybody that is an Aries, a Leo, and a Sag. These are my fire elements. You're going to be back there, okay, in that general corner. So if you are, stay with me now, if you are in Aries, Leo, or Sag, you're going to go to that corner. We're going to go by group, y'all, so that we can organize. Don't start moving. I know my fire signs are like, I'm there already. Okay? Just, you know that that's the corner of fire. Now, all of my Gemini, Libra, and Aquarii, you are my air signs, and you're going to be to that corner, okay? <laughs> Notice how I'm putting fire and air together? Yes, we made each other. May all the ancestors be with us. <laughs> fire over there, air over there. Now I'm bringing my earth signs and my water signs to the front, and I'm going to have... <laughs> Who's it all? <laughs> I bet you that was a fire sign. Okay. All of my earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Caps, you're going to come to this corner. Okay, my earth signs. Notice how gentle that was. You're like, <laughs> okay. Now, all my water signs, you're going to come over here. My water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Stay in your places, okay? We're going to go group by group. Everybody okay? When you migrate, y'all, we're going to go through the same exercise. You're going to get there, and the group is going to come up with one thing that as a group, they want to lift as a challenge or an improvable, and you're going to go through this flow. 
And then I'm going to bring up the terms again so that you can play with it. And you're going to have 20 whole minutes. At the end of that, each group is going to have one person come up to the stage and you're going to share with everybody what came up. And pause, y'all. As you migrate to these locations, this is the community agreement we're practicing today. It's okay for somebody to say the wrong thing. It's okay for somebody to say, I'm trying to say something. I don't know how to say it. So I'm going to say it in this way. And we're all going to be like, thank you for saying that. And we're going to embrace it. And if it's something that gets activated, we can say, hey, we can talk about it afterwards and come tap me in. Does that make sense, y'all? Let's practice with each other. Let's call in the ideal world where we're all centered in common values so that we can feel in that world today. Can we all agree on that? Okay, so now fire signs we go with you first or else you get offended. Please stand up if you're able to. And fire signs are gonna go to that corner. If you're a fire sign and your mobility doesn't allow you to get there, no worries, stay where you are. You'll be part of another elemental group. All my fire signs, make your way to your left side of the room. Oh. I believe in y'all to find a place. Yo, this is like for the room. That's a lot of fire. Yeah, you can go out, y'all. Everybody look. look. Look what's happening right now. Look how many fire sounds we have in the room. No wonder I'm sweating on stage. Absolutely. All my right. fire signs. Uh, fire signs. Quick update. I was just told we actually have to wrap up the entire thing in 12 minutes. So, intentional adaptation. We're going to have to figure something out. What I'm going to do is when everybody gets to their circles, you're going to get there. You're going to um, introduce yourselves to each other. And then we're all going to go to lunch. I hope that many of you will come back to the breakout session in the afternoon. And we're going to keep playing there just to practice with the time, OK? okay. There's an in-person session, and there is an online session for both modalities. Is that OK with everybody? But what's most important, y'all, is I need you to get into your elemental circles, OK? So go, and then at 12 minutes, everybody, we're all just going to migrate to lunch, and you can't keep the party over there. But fire sounds over there. All my air signs go to your respective corner, right side of the room. Migrate towards each other. It's a reminder for everybody. Air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. What's going on? I seem to see everybody in the fire and the air sign. Oh. Oh, my signs. So you're going to make it to this bottom corner, earth signs, and all of my water signs. You're going to come to the front right corner. That way, water this way. My Let's try to get there in three minutes. Come on stage, three minutes and make some place for y'all. Yeah, for sure. Slow, slow, slow. Slow, slow, First time, y'all can use the stage. Spread, spread onto the stage if you want to. Then. Spread onto the air. You can hear, you know, just feel, feel your energies.
folks in the additional room. I wish y'all were with us. I apologize. We're practicing a lot here. This is all water. All my water signs. If you can hear my voice clap twice, if you can hear my voice clap twice, if you can hear my voice clap two times, if you can hear my voice clap two times, if you can hear my voice clap three times, and you can hear my voice clap one time. Okay, hear me out, y'all. Those are our air signs. Air signs that you're still here. Stay here just so you can receive the instructions that you can cross pollinate. My fire signs, they're, of course, fire gonna fire. Hey, yo, Fredo. Are you a fire sign? Right now. No. Of course not. Uh, can, one, can one of you do me a favor and call uh, one of the fire signs just to like make it over here? I already got it. Yeah, I bet they left the building. I wouldn't be surprised. They already went to get make line for the food. Stop for like that. They're like, we're doing our own thing. Every time, without fail. Everywhere that I travel internationally, every time I do this, fire signs is like, please stay. <laughs> they can't hear me, right? Hey, fire signs. Are you a fire sign? <laughs> Everybody's always like, oh. <laughs> Can you get at least one or two of them to come just to, to, to receive the instructions? They, there's microphones out there. Do you know what a fire sign is? Yeah. They don't be hearing. Beautiful. You're a fire sign? Okay, pause. It, but I got to give you instructions really quickly. Let people introduce themselves. Stay. Yeah, pause. All right, y'all. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you all to look around your elemental space. I love this so much. Do me a favor, y'all. I hope that everybody can stay for lunch, right? I hope that y'all are going to do lunch. Please sit with each other. Gravitate towards each other. Move this conversation into the lunch period. Does that make sense? Unless you had business to do at lunch, which we just talked about, we got to take care of ourselves first and then do business after. So it's a great opportunity for us to practice that. I want you all to look around your elemental group and I want you to have lunch with each other just so that we can go from here and honor the time of all of the great stuff that's going to be out there for lunch so that you can take this conversation out there for lunch. Can we do that? Yes. Beautiful. Can you, I'll go over there too, because there's no way I'm sending you into a fire circle by yourself. Uh, air signs, can you tell your air signs to try to stay together for lunch and take the conversation over there? Can at least one of you or a couple of you take a picture of the questions? Or does everybody have a picture of the questions? And does everybody have a picture of the uh, frameworks? So let's do it again. I don't need to worry about water and earth because at least 10 of you already did it. Y'all laughing, but it's true. Okay, y'all. So here are the here are the uh, frameworks. Take a picture of that. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. And then here are the questions for your group. Those are the questions. It's the exact same questions. I promise y'all. There's no like tricky That's stuff. As y'all have that conversation over lunch, for those of you that will come to the breakout session, we're gonna go into it, okay? To see what came up and so on and so forth, and then we'll debrief a little bit more. I apologize, y'all, that we we're running out of time. This is usually not how we get down, but this is exciting. Look around your room. You're not connected elementally. You're going to see what that means when you share quality time with each other. Some of you are like, I knew it. I knew you were just like me because I can't stand you. Or I 
knew it. You're just like me. That's why I feel so great around you. Does that make sense, y'all? I know you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Thank y'all so much. Is lunch is lunch that way? Yeah. Uh, all of you all glorious beings, please make your way out of here. Go get yourself some nourishment. Air signs, either come down or around, whatever you need. But make sure that everybody knows that we're trying to have lunch together.